Hi. Thank you so much um, for coming to the Coastal Science and Policy presentation. I'm Safari Fang. To my Chinese co colleagues, I'm Ding Xi. And I'm presenting on theory of change for sustainable marine aquaculture in China. So why do I choose aquaculture and why do I choose China? Because aquaculture is a truly exciting topic to study and work. It is the fastest growing food producing sector in the world. It contributes a lot to global food security and more than 70% of the world's fish used for food come from aquaculture. And China is a giant in aquaculture production. As we can see in a graph on the right, two thirds of global aquaculture come from China and there are lots of ongoing policy changes towards environmental sustainability of aquaculture. So here we can see the, um, I'm focusing on marine aquaculture, which is about 40% of China's aquaculture production. And here we can see the trend of aquaculture development in China. Freshwater aquaculture has always been there. It's, there's a history of um, thousands of years. And marine aquaculture is relatively new. There are rapid expansion since the early 1990s. And we can see that it's developing really fast and there's lots of exciting developments. So this yellow cooker is a uh, focus of my, one of the focus of my research. It is the biggest marine aquaculture, thin fish aquaculture industry in China. Um, although there are lots of opportunities in marine aquaculture, there are also lots of potential environmental problems. And as we can see here, the three yellow cooker in the middle require all the fish around them to as feed and all the fi little fish around them are wild fish uh, they are mostly juvenile fish taken directly from the ocean and the feed conversion rate is really low it can be as low as seven to one which means seven pounds of wild fish feed would only result in one pound of growth in yellow coker so with these opportunities and unsustainable aquaculture problems in mind, I designed my capstone to have three focus. So first of all, I want to find out opportunities and barriers for mariculturists, also called fish farmers, and about how they learn and think about long-term sustainability or whether they think about it at all. And second, I want to um, come up with a theory of change to shift Chinese marine aquaculture development towards sustainability. And third, I want to find out how founders can support effective, sustainable marine aquaculture development in coastal communities. So I conducted extensive field work in China, mostly in two provinces, Fujian province, um, in red and Hainan province is a southern island um, towards the bottom of the map. Um, so I've studied yellow croaker, what I mentioned earlier in Fujian province, and also another aquaculture, sizable aquaculture industry called goopers in Hainan province. So I've conducted a lot of semi-structured interviews and uh, combined with a policy gap analysis. Uh, most of my interviewees are mariculturists and I also interview some experts and people in the aqua feed industry. So why do I choose yellow coker and gooper as my case studies? It's because they represent two typical marine aquaculture production systems in China. So yellow cokers grow in marine cage aquaculture, sometimes also referred to as net pens. You can see that on the right and on the left, the goopers mostly grow in the shore-based aquaculture um, and they're mostly flow-through systems in Hainan where I studied them. 
So my interviews are semi-structured. I have a script of interview questions or covering um, topics in the supply chain, market intervention, as well as sustainability. And because they are semi-structured, uh, my interviewees were able to ask questions or they can bring up any topics of their cho choice that they want to talk about. And most interviews range from um, short as like an hour to a whole day because I, I made sure that I would visit the aquaculture operations and have a full site visit to gain more in-depth insight. So this is a typical day for me, uh, doing field work in Fujian province um, and in the yellow coker production area. So the picture on the upper left, there are all these buckets have wild fish directly from the ocean. They're mostly juvenile fish and they're grind up into uh, meat patties, and then uh, people dump them directly to the net pens. So on the upper right, we can see some houses um, because people, the fish farmers there, it's also a way of living for them. They live right next to their net pens in these float, floating houses, which is fascinating and um, great. It's also a great way to know about their life. And these pictures show a typical day for me in Hainan, studying the gooper aquaculture. So the aquaculture tanks are in a pretty simple sheltered area. So you can see in the picture on the upper left. And the goopers eat mostly pellet feed and they are um, in this flow through systems where people um, pump water from coastal areas and the water flows through the tanks and then are um, and go right back to the coast. And I have recorded and taken notes of all the interviews and I also try to participate in the daily activities of the fish farmers. As you can see here, I'm trying to feed the fish. So from all the interviews I've conducted, I have made um, transcripts of them. And then I went through a coding analysis to summarize the scenes that emerged from the interviews. So here I developed nine codes. And then with these nine codes, I went back to the interviews and counted uh, how many times they occurred in the interviews. So I have gained a lot of new insights from my interview analysis. And so the tests in gray are my original ideas from tech desktop research before I started my capstone field work. And the tests in gray are my new insights. I've realized that local decision making and enforcement are critical towards sustainable outcomes. And I've learned that fish farmers they know about aquaculture technology and um, sustainability in social learning networks rather than um, like, like government technological stations or, or the local government campaigns. And I've also learned that the aquaculture supply chain is segregated. A lot of fish farmers do not know what consumers need because they only deal with the middle sellers. So, uh, which means that consumers only influence producers to to a small degree. So from the codes I have summarized and the scenes that I've extracted from my interview, I found three leverage points. The leverage points are points in a system that have good, significant ripple effects on others. So here are my three big leverage points summarized from my interview analysis. So first one is about local implementation, and second one is about the importance of social learning networks, and third one is about how local-based organizations can really make a big impact on sustainability. So with my interview analysis, as well as a policy gap analysis of critical national policies in aquaculture. I have developed a theory of change for aquaculture to become more sustainable in China. I call it grassroots theory of change. So the, here are the first three steps and they can be achieved by an infusion of support from philanthropy, 
government and scientists that help farmers norm and communities organize. So the first step, the organized communities that requires uh, stakeholder coordination mechanisms and policy ad advocacy groups, which link leads to increased public involvement, capacity, and awareness. And then the, this grassroots actions can start to make impact on decision makers. So in the later steps of the proposed theory of change, the increase of community power creates enabling conditions for policy improvements and leads to positive changes eventually positive changes in social and ecological conditions in marine aquaculture systems. So what insights can my research um, provide to founders? Uh, a lot of founders are looking at building capacity and create enabling conditions for um, marine conservation in China right now. And through my research, I've realized that these two points are very important. First, it's very important to strengthen local organizations um, because um, fish farmers, they learn about sustainability and learn about how to farm fish through the learning networks. So if founders found sustainable aquaculture training networks, focusing on influencers who are doing really well in, in their operations and doing things sustainably, that can have big ripple impacts in their communities. And second one is about bridging the education of consumers and fish farmers. Um, a lot of NGOs are thinking about ways to engage consumers and eventually influence farmers. And I have found that maybe it's better to work with both farmers and consumers um, because it's not as easy to have consumers to connect with fish farmers. But if NGOs can reach out to both and connect the supply chain, they can bridge the education gap and have um, a bigger impact. So my capstone is a lot about sustainability, but have, after finishing my capstone, I've also re rethinking about what sustainable re sustainability really means. So here in the picture, you can see some like debris of like flotation devices and some net pen structures in Fujian because the local government in Fujian in the yellow coker production area, they are currently doing a big crackdown to take down old net pens. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have lost their livelihoods, they've lost their homes. And remember seeing the floating houses they lived in, like they've lost a lot and they did not get a lot, a lot of compensation to start a new life because China is trying really hard to achieve environmental sustainability, but is China disrupting social and economic stability while doing that? And sustainability, we now have three areas. It has economy, society, and environment. So my capstone has made me think a lot about how to achieve a balanced, sustainable development. There are so many lessons I have learned in my capstone, and here are just a few. I um, learned how to collaborate with local fishing and aquaculture communities. I've learned how not to walk around with my calendar and trying to put everything in my calendar because people have different sense of place and time. And I've learned how to respect other people's schedule, try to engage in the daily activities of the interviewees. Um, so I earn their trust and they open up to me about what they really think about sustainability and government policies. I try to learn the local language and culture. They're both pretty difficult in the coastal communities. I've tried to pick up a few phrases. And a lot of the people I have encountered in fish aquaculture and fishery are men. They are more visible than fisherwomen in the community, but fisherwomen play very important roles as well. So I I've tried to engage to as many women as I could. And here in the picture, you can see some little kids um, in the local villages where I worked at, and they really like to follow me around. It's probably the first time in their life to see a female researcher. So uh, I hope that I have made uh, 
they remember me and they, they have seen that they are female researchers and scientists out there and they are opportunities beyond what's in their village. So I couldn't have done the capstone without support from my partner organizations, Qingdao Marine Conservation Society and the David and Lucio Packard Foundation, especially Song Ling Wang um, from Qingdao Marine Conservation Society and uh, Dr. Walt Reed, as well as Rachel Wang from Packard. Um, and Anne Kapczynski, Dr. Anne Kapczynski has been a wonderful advisor for me. As you can see in the photo on the upper left, Anne and I co-organized a workshop at the Pew Fellows Program in Marine Conservation um, last year with a lot of experts from around the world. And I really also want to thank my field work partners. Um, the bottom from left to right, um, Fang Lu and Li Yichang from Qingdao Marine Conservation Society, Liu Wenli from China Blue Sustainability Institute, as well as my field work partner in Hainan, Alan Tan. And um, special thanks to my host family on the bottom right in Hainan. They always make sure I stayed safe, healthy, and nourished. And I couldn't have done this capstone without support from the CSP program, and especially my amazing classmates in the first cohort. Thank you so much.